This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 372. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview, neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I keep wanting to say Beachview, Pennsylvania, but that's like, that doesn't feel right. It's not. It's a neighborhood. It's in Pittsburgh. It's where we are, and it's where we're podcasting. Uh, and of course, this is the show where we talk about uh, all the tech and geeky things that are awesome uh, from people in Pittsburgh using this stuff. Uh, all around uh, with us as usual. He is back in the studio from a week hiatus doing Halloween things. Hey, this is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Did you enjoy your trick or treat candy? We did, we did. And, nice. uh, and then the parade they went by uh, last week and everything like that. John, of course, is the uh, uh, gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. We had uh, we had your other ga- your other guru from uh, Big Bank last week, Ron Krause. I saw him filling in. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about the new Pixel phone, how you been doing? I've been doing good, and uh, you know we had a long conversation about that. So, and and I watched some of the episodes, so looks like it went pretty well. Awesome, and of course uh, we have uh, back with us in the studio Brian Crawford from the River's Edge. Whoa, is that? <laughs> I'm here. That's 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 the that's the we've caught you face. <laughs> <laughs> So I Happy thought to be here. I thought we were going to catch you eating eat pizza. No, there was an awesome like shot of me before we went on air, like digging into a slice. So that might be like a good promo picture. Oh, it's up on the there. stream. It's up on the yeah. stream. If you want to go grab it later, so that's what I mean. There you go. Yep, we we we, we use our sponsors. We love our sponsors. And thank you so much for Slice. We'll talk about them a little bit later in the show. Uh, but, of course, this is the Awesome Cast. Uh, you can check us out at awesomecast.com. You subscribe to us on Awesome Cast on the Twitter and the Facebook as well. Uh, you can also drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, hit up the Facebook group for the Awesome Cast. We share a lot of stories and some of them we use here throughout the show. Uh, and also subscribe and rate us wherever you like to watch or listen to us. Uh, of course, the Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google, Mus- Google, Google Music podcasts <laughs> people who play music podcasts it's That's so weird so weird on the branding uh but anyways uh or of course iHeartRadio, and of course video versions on the youtube and the facebook page and of course we live stream on the facebook and all the places but the primary chat room is on the facebook page but you can check us out on our youtube and our and of sorgatron media twitch and youtubes and uh, of course our periscope even as well so thank you everybody dropping in there wherever it, it's easy for you to experience the awesome cast here on tuesdays and get a notification we are there and looking to add stuff all the time for stuff like that 7 p.m eastern time every tuesday and of course we are uh streaming on rivers edge pgh.com saturdays at 9 a.m and our other streaming partner the 405 media.com uh at 9 a.m pacific time five days a week over there uh so uh thank you so much to our streaming partners for helping us get the awesome out there uh all around the world and 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 brian too (laughs) as a representative today um and also, uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters, uh, the patreon.com slash awesomecast. Uh, Matt Weller at the $5 Coffee Club. He gets things like the Awesome Cast Gold. Uh, we're talking about some interesting, um, um, basically, uh, mug-worthy podcasts, I think was the topic uh, we were talking about today before the show. And, of course, uh, Michael Fedor at the Fan Show dollar level. And that's Matt underscore Weller with one T. On Twitter and Mike Fedor show on Twitter as well. We also have available the $10 uh, uh, level where you guys get a state of the show and a $20 executive producer level available for those interested. Uh, and uh, you get special credit on the show in the notes as well as uh, we do uh, hand out business cards after uh, four consecutive months of being on that level. And you guys really do help become part of the show. And you get a more of a say in what happens in the show and the development here in the future as well. So um, I, meant to, I meant to get into it uh, on your intro, Brian, but you got something cool coming up. 
uh, with uh, River's Edge. You guys are doing a little bit of a spinoff here. We are, yeah. So we're launching our second radio network. It's the second radio network to launch in Millville in less than three years. And it's called the Metal Edge. And it will continue in the spirit of the River's Edge with being 100% local original music. It'll have a little bit of a wider radius, but it's still going to be all local, all original in, in the region. And uh, yeah, we're super excited. It's been about a year in the works, mm -hmm. but uh, it's up. It's going to be running this Sunday. We're going to have a big launch party at the studio at Mr. Small's. It's going to be at 830 don't try to come in. It's a, not a big enough studio to bring everybody in. So we're bringing in some of our uh, some of our friends and sponsors and stuff like that. And then everybody else, we're hoping that you join us at riversedgepgh.com slash live or on the uh, Metal Edge page, which is metaledgepgh.com to watch the announcement. And we're actually going to click the publish button on the website live on a, uh, on a video cast, so you'll be able to watch us actually click the publish button to put the stream live on the website. As, as, as that is a ballsy move as far as technology <laughs> goes. It's like, we're going to hit publish and nothing is going to go wrong. Nothing at all. <laughs> no. As long as Comcast doesn't go down or anything, we'll oh, be gosh. good. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm afraid of it now after <laughs> that last is, few days. Yeah, it's terrifying. And I mean, first off, you have to wonder with their upload speeds will the publish button actually make it to the web host <laughs> to actually publish there is that get a backup personal hotspot just to be safe yeah yes well that's sprint so i'm in i'm pretty much out of luck yeah <laughs> not winning not winning <laughs> uh awesome no this has been really cool and and it definitely i you know i there's people here that i've been like hey have you heard about this and they're like already on top of this yeah it's, so I'm really, it's really cool to see that coming well people don't realize this but Pittsburgh has actually the third largest metal scene in the country. I learned that from so, the press release. Yeah, so it, it just makes sense that this would be the first direction that we go in here in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. And it allows us to put in a lot of music that might be a little outside of the scope of The River's Edge, which is multi-genre. Mm -hmm. But because it's multi-genre, you have to pick music within each genre that will kind of gel together mm -hmm. and obviously metal has a, a wide variety of music and, and i always feel like there's multiple genre well there are mul multiple genres within metal but it's so unique each of these different genres and some of them just kind of fall right outside of that bubble so this way we'll be able to service those bands and really yeah reach out to a larger portion of the music community and, and, and i like that i like that's the hyper focusing because even sometimes on I, I love the river's edge stream but sometimes it just like widely varies mm -hmm. and i'm just like not prepared for that wide scope that yeah. happens and uh no it's cool to be like no i just want we're just gonna listen to metal right now exactly that's uh it's good 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 and an alternative that they don't want to hear the talk stuff too true yeah that's another thing so eventually we'll spin off you know more stations yeah, yeah. as we grow but uh, but yeah, the metal edge. I mean, there, there may be there. There's going to be one show at some point later on, but it's going to be like a metal news and information show, uh, talking about the local scene and even national touring acts that are coming through the Pittsburgh area and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Uh, so hey, with that, do you have an, an is that your awesome thing, or do you have anything else uh, you want to share this week? Because you you really you made people buy equipment last I time know, you were on yeah. here. I always with come awesome up with, with, uh, with yeah some really I feel like I come up with very practical awesome things which I, which I love. That's to use. great. That's great. Um, because I guess I'm just in awe when I find uh, certain pieces of technology because I don't I don't live in it like you Sorg. So I you know when I see it and it's it's it impresses me. I, I get all in. And the one that I'm really enamored with right now is the Google desktop, the Chrome desktop. It's a remote desktop, and it's fantastic. And right now, we, we've switched to this streaming service, well, not streaming service, this uh, new in-house automation system for the River's Edge in, in particular. And because of Chrome Desktop, I'm actually able to go on a computer or go on my phone and completely control the computer. And this is the remote from, desktop, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. From my phone. So there's actually an app on the phone, and it has mm -hmm. a little mouse cursor, and I can move it around and actually, and it's just, in, it's through the Chrome browser so it's nothing like too intensive mm -hmm. but it's so great because if i need to even make a small edit for audio i can actually go in there and hear what is being played through the speakers on the computer remotely from my mm -hmm. phone or from a website and it has just made life so much easier for just like small things the other day you know a show host didn't get me the uh the show in time 
and they're like, oh, I left it on the computer back at the station. Well, I was able to actually go in, upload that show to the, you know, the system, or even put it into my Google Drive remotely using Chrome desktop. And it's just really been like the most handy tool ever. And once we have our entire studio built, as you've been in our studio, and for those of you who are, are listening or, or watching, when you come into the River's Edge studio, it's we've got a control room, and then we have a waiting room, which will be a live band performance space. So that's coming soon. And then on the other side of that is the actual studio where we sit. The problem is, is some of our shows, the engineer is also the co-host, and they want to be in the same room. So what do we do? We've got the Chrome desktop to control the computer and the automation system, and then we have a Behringer X32, which can go wirelessly as well, so we can bring a tablet into the actual studio room and control the soundboard from an iPad or a, an Android tablet or something like that. i got to find out what the specs are exactly. But you'll be able to completely control that room from another location, which I think is fantastic, and it's going to really allow us to, to be very flexible and utilize all of our equipment to the, the best of our ability. And it's to me, it just blows my mind that I can sit here and control another computer right from my cell phone. And it's free. That's the part that really blows my mind is I feel like, I mean, I don't know, and, and maybe you know this more than, than I would, but I feel like companies probably spend thousands of dollars for technology similar to this. Oh, absolutely. And I'm using it for free through Google. And it absolutely. just blows my mind. And Chilla, I know you, you brought this up in the past too, right? Yeah, th that's actually one of my favorites. And I'm trying to remember what the old product was it was the same it wasn't team viewer but it was like uh, well team yeah viewer. team viewer i knew is now log me and used to log me so, so yeah. log me was like my go-to and then they started to charge yeah okay um i think they may have reverted if it's only one or two pcs back to free yeah but i quickly landed on uh the chrome remote desktop utility and i install it on everything the other thing is after Windows XP Vista. And when you got into 7, if you were a home version, that remote desktop service was turned off. So you, so I oh, ended up, I installed okay. this on a bunch of Windows 7 Home Edition PCs just so I could easily remote desktop to them. And, and it, it's a lifesaver. I mean, getting to it from your phone, to your point, your tablet, anywhere you're at, being able to jump back. And the other thing that I've noticed so obviously Google has money and brilliance. So <clears throat> the bandwidth utilization is low and the response rate is extremely high in comparison to even Mac OS's remote desktop. Wow. Um, all, all their competitors, it's it's an extremely, extremely amazing Even better than TeamViewer? I haven't used TeamViewer recently. I use Team it was Viewer, better than an older version of TeamViewer. I use TeamViewer pretty much on the regular. Um, and, and it's same thing. It's like, hey, uh, actually, when I do the podcast here afterwards, uh -huh. instead of sitting here and waiting for everything to upload, I will set everything up, start it posting because our bandwidth upload sucks right now. Yeah. And I'll go home and can bring it up on my phone or my iPad and complete whatever needs to be published. You know, hit publish. You yeah. Know, things like that. So so I've, I'm promoting from home just to finish the small tasks or make sure that something weird hasn't happened. So yeah, it makes uh, it so much nicer. Oh, yeah, and, it's and great. I was able to do, you know, things from work the other night. I was, you know, on my lunch break at work and mm -hmm. pulling out the phone and doing things for the network on the computer at the station. And it was, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Huge fan of it. It's good stuff. I, I definitely recommend it. I, I think I've tried it at one point and couldn't really get it set up. Uh, but that was probably like when it first came out, Chilla, and it's probably a lot it's easier. It's really now. easy. Yeah. I mean, I set it up. It wasn't <laughs> our tech guy that did it. It was, it was me. Yes. So. I would say, and Brian, you know, Brian, while, while, while an online radio fellow is not the most technically. <laughs> <laughs> I get by. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he survives. He survives as a, as an internet personality. So, <laughs> I think it does. It does require a Gmail address. Yes. So yeah, that's the main. That's a big thing. Yeah. So, because I was trying to, I'm trying to remember. I was trying to help someone out, and I was like, just install this, and they're like, I need it. it they didn't have a Gmail address. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. seriously. That's but, like impressive, actually. Well, if you're trying, <laughs> if you're getting that remote phone call for oh, help no. and random it. support, it's yeah, yeah. We have a friend with a hotmail. I, I bug all the time about yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You have, you know, or the random AOL that comes up. Um, I guess are those going to be oath.com email soon for Yahoo and them? So I don't know. 
Um, Chilla, of course, you got something to uh, uh, share with us. But first, before you do that, <laughs> before I share, before we everyone tease the thing with the X in the name. Uh, but something you can do with that phone. Actually, I was doing it with my 6S even beforehand, and we talked about this. Uh, of course, IKEA has a lot of the augmented reality uh, kind of spatial things happening. But now also uh, it's built into the Amazon app. I, I actually was playing with this a little bit. I was putting loungers here in the studio. I was putting echoes on on coffee tables and things like that. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just you bring up that camera app. Actually, that's exactly the right, the, the same uh, lounger that I put in my uh, that I, that I put in my uh, uh, studio, uh, but it, it's it's cool because it's built right in. You hit that, you know, the, the 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 camera that usually you can do some product identification, look for products, and look for the AR, and it pulls up uh, using, using Apple's AR kit, and it works pretty good. And again, even on my you know lowly 6s, uh, it was working pretty smoothly. Um, uh, you know, it maybe took a little bit to load, but other than that. Uh, so, you know, you know, we talked about Ikea, like I said, in the past, but I think this is, you know, I think this is where people actually use it to a certain extent, right? And, and I'm interested to see, because I, I, I saw this, I saw an article on this, and they were saying, like, only certain products. Yeah, like, they have a list have kind of pre-made okay. for it. Of course, all the Amazon Echoes are there. But I was surprised to see, I think, like, someone had Funko Pops. Like, yeah, I believe you it. Could, you could... You what is the place on your what is a Funko Pop counter? Oh, <gasps> Funko Pops are those. Um, hold on, I'll, I'll pull up a picture. Little, like hold the, on, I, I'll, little I'll figures. Show. You'll bring it on, on screen. Yeah. Funko Pop. F U N K O. So they're 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 these vinyl action. They're basically these vinyl figures that everybody's going crazy for these days. Okay. Uh, they're, they're highly highly collectible. I don't know why these are. I DJs. see. So I don't collect anything because I feel like as soon as you do. You'll never achieve your final collection because <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're always coming out, with especially new stuff. with these because they they're never ending. Yeah, oh, yeah I didn't know yeah. they had a Marty McFly on a hoverboard keychain. It's pretty cool. That's why I never started collecting Star Wars. You know, I was a huge Star Wars fan, and I'm like, I'm gonna go broke. It's one of those I, I can't go down that road kind of thing. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's why I just don't collect anything. Mm. I collected Star Wars box sets for a while because they can only make so many of them mm. at a time. I mm. mean, they'll keep making them. They'll keep making the same original trilogy indefinitely in different box sets, but they can only do it so many years mm-hmm. in a row. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, 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 Katie has uh, about three different versions of the original trilogy on VHS box sets. Oh, you, not on VHS, you, but overall. Yeah, okay. yeah you have versions. all kinds of different ones. I know yeah. you have one in the studio too. Like I do. I have the wrap. original box set still in the wrappings. Yeah, I got it for like 40, 40 bucks at a flea market. Jeez. Did you have the one that came in like the dark blue box with the kind of hologram on the front? No, it I don't like, have that. Yeah, one. I had I had that one. I ended up selling it. Oh, that's cool. I found the I found a box set of the whoa what did I do there I found a box set of the original trilogy special edition with all those graphics they for the first time they put all that yeah, new stuff the in there the first time that George Lucas VHS, sold his soul to the devil exactly on VHS and it was three dollars at half price books three dollars too much three I mean, dollars I, I have that one but yeah <laughs> I also have a making of D, uh, a CD ROM that came with a Lucas Arts package I got back in the day did, did they ever release like the original without the updates to it. Supposedly they did on DVD. Yes, so they added it as a special edition, and I don't have the information to confirm whether this is true or not, but somebody who told, told me this, who tends to just know random stuff, he said that George Lucas, because he divorced his wife, she gets a cut from the originals, like unedited. So George Lucas was never willing to release it as a standalone movie because he didn't want <laughs> to give her any money. Whereas when he put it in as a special like feature, a special option, then he was able to get around paying her because he wasn't selling yeah. the unedited version. No, that was just a special feature in the special edition. That and I think those original DVDs are pretty... Like It was the first time they were put on DVD and there was a second disc or feature or it was whatever. always on the yeah. second disc because they weren't yeah. selling that yeah they were selling the other version interesting i wonder i wonder if that still applies with the new with disney buying them and everything no they too. don't care disney no, doesn't no. care he no, hates do disney want. Yeah. He, and he and he blows my mind because he he want he he sold disney for all this money right he made that decision himself he never had to and now he's running around every chance he can knocking disney down and criticizing everything that they do with star wars and it's like dude you're the one that sold it. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and I don't want to hear from George Lucas, the guy who testified before Congress against the colorization of black and white movies because you shouldn't change a movie once it's finished, when he went and literally changed every aspect of his movie, including removing characters and putting new characters in, changing voices, and everything else. So I really don't want to hear it from him. I'm sorry. I, he's like Dr. Like, was it Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. That's George Lucas. Like, you know, he's done some really great things, but then he's also his own worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. I, I Look at the original trilogy, or look at the... The, the prequels. prequels, yeah. Ugh. The ones that he had the most autonomy in, in creating yeah. and, and how we're bad they are. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, well, that may all change sooner or later because supposedly Disney, Disney might buy said 20th Century Fox. <laughs> oh. Uh, that's the rumor going around. That, that yep. might be the first time a Star Wars uh, special edition is warranted. Yeah, Just yeah. completely redo the prequels. Well, also, and... yeah, you'd, you'd have the rights to all the originals, and which I don't think Disney has. Like, uh, the rights to, like, the original originals, right? And also, I believe the first one, you can't, if you buy, like, the... Uh, Disney online pack. It's only available because they had the Disney Anywhere. The original A New Hope Star Wars is not available on the Disney Anywhere. Oh, okay. uh, at least at the time. Oh. Maybe now with movies anywhere because it was a 24th century Fox movie and not a Disney movie despite being sold yeah. as part of the package. Okay. So there's like a little bit of discrepancy. Like it wasn't available on all platforms in the same way and cross platform and everything like that. That means they'll get the X Men. Brand. Yeah, and even more importantly, Fantastic Four that's Thank been God. screwed for 20, oh 30 gosh. years. Ho- hopefully they redo that first and we, we can somehow wipe out every remnant of the existing Fantastic Fours. What blows my mind is there's that really, really old version of Fantastic Four that like was before they had good graphics. And when Mr. Fantastic goes to stretch his arm, you literally just see an arm come in the frame because they don't have the technology to, to wait was that the that? one in the 90s they did real quick so they could retain the rights yeah but you know yeah. what that's better than anything that fox has put out yeah it's true too it, like true. way better the acting is phenomenally better the storyline is better it's better in basically every way except for graphics to, there, which blows there, my mind back in the 80s and I'm, I'm guessing it actually was done in the 70s but there was a spider-man like made yep. for tv movie yep and a captain america where he's on a yeah, motorcycle captain america. yeah 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 hmm. uh, those were i believe those were like like pilots like attempted pilots at series oh okay uh, i was not aware uh, of I, I think like uh that's purely off the top of my head but um and also there was a japanese live action version of spider-man I Don't look that guy yeah, up. Yeah, I heard that was pretty good, wasn't it? Or... Uh, maybe for the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, just, I just remember seeing the Spider-Man, and it definitely looked, when he was climbing up, he was supposed to be climbing up the side of this house, mm-hmm. and he was definitely climbing on a painting of a house painted <laughs> on like a, a, a floor. <laughs> Yeah, special effects are hard. Yes. Uh, Chilla, you got something awesome there in your uh, little grubby hands. So, and, and let me use my face I'm to trying not to, it. Not to judge the size of your hands. Not to judge the <laughs> So I got the uh, iPhone X, mm-hmm. and uh, I got to say, it, it honestly feels like I'm living in the future. Just from the mere fact of the size, weight, full screen, full glass screen. I mean, there's virtually no bezel. Um, I am extremely, extremely happy with the device. And most of all, and I think we we covered oh, eons ago, the HP, uh, what was that? The touchpad that ran WebOS. Um, this really reminds me a lot of WebOS, um, especially with the way you kind of swipe up um, to, to close applications. Um, it does have me, I will say, as a, it does have me relearning some things. We, I think we were talking before the show. Um, to take a screenshot, you have to hit hold down power, but not for too long, and tap uh, volume up. Um, if you use the reachability where you can kind of swipe down, or it was like, a, I think it used to be a triple click to get the screen to kind of shift down. It's like a, it was a double tap on the home button. Or was it? But it was double tap and hold. I can't remember. No, no, no. no. It was, it was um, double tap without clicking. I can't remember. Yeah, without clicking. Without clicking. Yeah. So now you have to. You have to. Um, let me open up an app. You have to pull down in the bottom right. Hmm. And now I'm not getting it. To so work. it's very spatial. It, yeah, it's very. There we go. Yeah. 
so you it's but it's only in like this bottom corner um, like it's got a tiny hot spot over yeah, it's there. Got a tiny so, hot so, spot. so it, it feels like it feels like it's turned into a little bit of like the expose that I always accidentally trigger yes. on on Mac OS, where you go up to the corner of a screen and like all of a sudden all my windows popped up, <laughs> you know, and, it, and you know things like that. It just drives me absolutely insane when I leave that stuff on. Uh, but that's basically what they're doing on the screen. In, in general and and i will say i'm not i'm not hitting anything accidentally i didn't find that by accident um i'm trying to remember i it may have been on macbrick weekly or somewhere i'm more where i was reading about how to get get to that so there were but there's a few things like that that i did find myself having to either accidentally run into someone else that says hey here's like the five things you need to know that have changed yeah like you're um, kind of you're still, you're still kind of learning it yeah yeah but it and it's but it's very just in time. It's, hey, mm. how, I, I needed to grab a screenshot two nights ago. And I was like, I don't know how to get a screenshot. So uh, there is some minor changes. It's it's not going to cause most people, hopefully, a huge heartache. Um, I've heard a lot of people complain that there's no more percentage over the battery. Yeah. Um, or next to the battery, you have to swipe down in that the top of the screen to, to get that area up. I don't notice the notch at all. Um, I think people are a little over sensitive about all oh, this notch is taking up space in the screen and everything. What is because, the notch? Um, so, so go ahead. So see how. Kind of hold that up for people on the camera so they can see too. So basically, yeah. uh, can you pull up something white? So basically, instead of like the bar on the top of your screen going all the way across, uh, all that technology for the cameras and the facial recognition and everything has to go somewhere, right? Yeah. So uh, down a little bit. There you go. So you see, you see that little notch like on a oh, white okay. screen. Like it's it just, it's just. Oh, uh, people are just looking for reasons to complain. <laughs> yeah, but if you're watching video and you go full screen, then that little thing is notched out of like your image of Wonder Woman or something, right? Yeah. So I mean, I, it's one of those like, hey. You're watching a movie on a cell phone. <laughs> uh, you know? You're not, you're not but, getting the full cinematic But experience. it's the best cell phone screen you're ever going to watch a movie on. And, so, isn't that, and that thing has like HDR and stuff on it, yes. right? So like it, HDR. it may actually be better than your TV at home. And you can, you can set the video it, to be boxed. Yeah, yeah. So it cuts here's that. here's so the you, thing. Glasses, glasses, glasses. Vision like a sniper because I don't watch movies on a cell phone. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm putting, saying it, I do I'm putting lot, it up for that. But, you know. For me, it's like on a plane. Or, okay. Okay. Well, okay, chat room. Well, first of all, Bobby F. J-Town. First of all, Bobby F. J-Town from a little bit ago was like, uh, hey, I heard you all were, uh, were talking about pops. Uh, says the guy that has like all the pops. All of them. Yes. Check out Bobby F. J-Town's uh, Instagram and see what we're talking about. What else is happening in the chat? No, that was... I'm not doing stuff on my phone. I'm just doing Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair, she's fair. Doing, she's doing stuff on our computer. She says. I do have a suggestion, though, Chilla. Don't drop it. Yes. It was rated the the new iPhone X was rated the most breakable iPhone. Were you, were you in here when we were talking about this earlier? Yeah, no, I, I, no, I don't no. Think no. Here So we we were wondering. So no one ever comes. No one. You never hear. Every year is going to be the most breakable device yet, and I think we were saying it's been since the Motorola Razor that anyone says this is the most indestructible device ever. So I, I, yes, it is glass front and back. Most of the Samsung devices have gone glass front and back. But is it like the Gorilla Glass type of glass? Because I think so. I had an iPhone that uh, at one point, and it was the one that had Gorilla Glass, and that thing was a beast. Like, I, I don't. Probably. I didn't think that was breakable. I like, I like dropped that four thing. maybe like where it's yeah four four, four S it, it was a four S because I had the yeah, Siri yeah. and I remember I used to work in a box truck and I would drop the phone all the time from this box truck which is pretty a pretty high drop and it took like a year before it started to crack and I never put a case on the thing so it was, it was fantastic. Now this thing is you know I had it less time and it's already broken but i also spent 100 bucks on this phone yeah which, which one's that one this is the moto g play moto g. Okay. okay so 100 bucks and it, for it, it, it is like a, a good cheap phone it is yeah it is. Mm. like it, it's recommended if you were just like oh, i need a hundred dollar phone well that, yeah and that's yeah. what it was you know my phone yeah. had died and yeah. i i couldn't believe it i went to best buy to buy a phone but it was only it was cheaper than it was anywhere else but i just needed a phone that night and I went to the Verizon store. They were closed. Turns out it was a good thing because I go to, to Best Buy and I'm like, look, I need a phone that just does things and it's cheap. 
and I hate Verizon, so I want to be able to switch. Turns out I'm, I'm almost missing Verizon with the poor internet connection that I've got at Sprint. But uh, but yeah, I, I went there and he got me this phone. It was unlocked, 100 bucks, and it does all the things. Mm-hmm. And I was like blown away. I mean, obviously it doesn't do all the things that your phone does because you spent. It unlock with your face. It doesn't have face lasers. It does not know that, no. But I can, I can do that thing with like the, the pattern mm-hmm. to unlock. So yeah, that's yeah. pretty snazzy. Uh, so, so, Chili, you mentioned the face uh, recognition. How does it work? How yeah. is it? You Have you been adapting to it? So, so I will say I'm, I was super impressed with the time it took to train. So if you're used to your fingerprint, and I don't care if it's Android or iOS or whatever, they're pretty much the same. Move your finger around, keep tapping, tap the edges, blah, 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 blah. This was rotate your head in a circle and then do it one more time and you're done. Um, I will say that the first couple times I used it, um, I had no problems. And then I think I had it on the nightstand and I went to go look at something and to unlock it. And without my glasses on, it did not know who I was. And that's oh, where really? they say it's, but it trains, it trains itself as it goes, especially when it's, if it can't identify you and then you tap in the correct passcode, it will kind of readjust the algorithm that it uses to figure out you are who you are. Um, and with two, two times of doing that without my glasses on, um, I, I can do it with glasses on, without glasses on, with oh, my wow. earmuffs on, with, I think, I'm trying to, uh, I had a hat on. Um, I've had no problems along those lines, as well as handing it to any other person. I've never had it accidentally unlock. So I, I know they're saying, I think people have said they've gotten twins to unlock it. Obviously you're twins. Um, and then I think some, which they actually look very different, closely related brothers have, have gotten it to unlock. Yeah. So I, 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 what I'm super impressed with is in the dark where i mean you could go into a pitch black room and the only real light source is going to be the front of the phone shining back on you um i had no problems um unlocking uh so i've been super happy i've been really impressed with every application that that has touch id allowed me to instantly start using face id um you get some prompts say hey do you want to use face id for this um and I feel like it's got to be a lot more reliable than the fingerprint scan because I worked for uh, for Giant Eagle at one time and you actually punched in and out with your fingerprint mm-hmm. and that way they could make it so that way no one else could punch in or out for you. True. And it was never like like, like there were – like it worked but for a lot of people – the fingerprint just didn't work because their fingerprint had hey, rubbed hey, off. I've or... seen I've seen something similar with uh, Wendy's uh, because mm-hmm. the terminals at the front, but then somebody will go and they've been dealing with greasy food, so it's not going to work. Yeah. And he's sitting there, keeps trying, 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 and that's how they replace those little micros cards, right? Um, but I gotta say, by all accounts and my use of it, the fingerprint on the phone has been pretty seamless since mm-hmm. uh what was the 5s that i've had a 5s as a 6s and it's been mm-hmm. fine absolutely fine um so i think unless you're wearing gloves unless you're wearing gloves that's the, <laughs> of course right so i mean you're bundled up in a hoodie and a glasses and a hat over your face you're it's not going to work for this iphone uh so that's the equivalent of, of wearing gloves in the winter it's i true. suppose yeah so but even you could get gloves that did it so um well i guess it's more not the fingerprint but still you, know. you can get capacitive gloves, but you can't get. I have seen, I have heard of people trying to train their their glove, which I really as a fingerprint. As oh a fingerprint. no, I wouldn't do that. But um, no, I I will say the gestures, the the smooth fluidness of the interface that, and even with the, the more more so with the tweaks they've made because not having a home button. Um, do you I, like that or? I, I actually, I don't think I'd want to go back now. Oh, wow. Like even, I I wish that, and I'm hoping Samsung will do this in an OS update. Um, obviously they have, it's all GUI based. It's not a physical, physical buttons. I'm hoping, because one of the things I like about the note is on the back of the note, it has the fingerprint sensor and the fingerprint sensor can be used as kind of like a, uh, a touchpad and it can gesture. So, with the fingerprint sensor, I can swipe down oh, and wow. I can get, I can get my notification bar up. So I'm hoping, and the other thing that you, know, you can do is the, the navigation buttons at the bottom of the screen, you can tell it to hide that bar. 
at the bottom, you can lock it in place or you can hide it um, and swipe up when you need it. I'm hoping they give options for gesture-based navigation where I don't have to have those typical Android buttons at all at the bottom. So, because I really enjoy, I mean, this doesn't have a physical button, but you still have the typical Android UI buttons at the bottom. Mm-hmm. I would be totally happy if I hope they rip off the idea of just making it all gesture based. I mean, they pretty much have been ripping off of you know everything. Well, that, and I think everyone rips yeah. off of each other. So I I, I don't want to I, I I don't want to say that. That's why all the phones look the same <laughs> these days. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, the the device size is perfect. The only thing I wish they would have done. I don't know if you've ever used any of the Plus line. Um, that has a, a the the screen when on this device, right? If I take this device and rotate it, um, everything stays uh, portrait. On the iPhone, on the Plus line, when you rotate, it it, rotates, it's like an iPad. It's like an iPad yeah. where it rotates the interface. This one I wish do it. I wish they would have done that. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's like just not quite big enough for them to yes. kind of classify it as that Plus model, right? Yeah. So, is it worth a thousand dollars in your opinion? Is it is the price? Just, well, I, I, is, is I think it, I think the question isn't is it worth a thousand dollars? Is it worth an extra three to four hundred dollars over the eight or eight plus? Right. Yes, and then I I would also take that and compare it. Is it worth the fifty dollars more than the Note eight right. or the Pixel XL two? Mm-hmm. Um, I would personally say yes. Okay. Um, but I would also, as a Galaxy Note eight user, I would never ever go back from the, the note line on the Android mm. side, just because the pencil and a lot of the things it can do speed mm. performance, etc. the deck stocks phenomenal. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to leave. If I, if I, if I had to choose one Android device, it would be the note eight. If I had to choose one, I, well, one iOS device, um, that, I, it, I would definitely go you, the you, you would go the distance with the 10 <laughs> yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe not for casual users, but those that want to like have the future phone, this is the future phone. And, and if you're one of those users that just wants that, that wants the long to me, the longevity of the device, I, I'm, I mean, yes, it's probably the, the eight and this will phase out at the same time from a life cycle perspective mm-hmm. based on the same processor. But I'm guessing you're going to, with the face ID and all of the additional sensors, I'm thinking that this you're going to see more capability come to this over time. Yeah. Whereas the other devices are going to kind of stay status quo. You're okay. going to get AR and stuff like that, but this I think you're going to get more out of it. Yeah, for for a longer period, and, and that's always that's always a thing. I, if somebody's waiting, that's why I've always said don't buy a phone the month before because whatever you get is going to have an extra year on it mm-hmm. by the next month, right? And that is like the cycles of if you buy a 6s now, it's the one that's not going to get updated to a new OS the first out of anything you can buy right now because it is the oldest and it's going to be cycled out, right? Mm-hmm. So again, if you are a person that's like, well, I want to sit on my phone for three or four years, don't get the smallest phone now yeah. because you're going to lose functionality first is always been kind of my question on that. You know, like you wouldn't have wanted to buy a 5S last year because what are you going to get out of it? So, mm-hmm. um, All right, awesome. So uh, with that, uh, you, I'm sure we'll be hearing as other people get their hands on the phone their phones. Uh, Chad the Shadow was supposed to be on tonight, and he got one too. I'm still doing my battle in my head on whether I want to jump into it and pay all that for it and everything. But man, I'm still a success. I'm fine do at you, the moment. Do you know did, how did he? Did he wait in line? Did I don't he know. I don't know what he did. Get up at three a.m. Okay. I don't know. We'll have to ask him when he gets in. We'll, we might try to get him in next week. So, anyways, in the meantime, hey, you know what doesn't get outdated? Slice on Broadway, Ray Bryan. You've been loving it. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, there he goes. In action. Action. Action sponsor shot. Thanks to our (laughs) friends. Another Beach View original slice on Broadway right here on Broadway. Literally up the street from us. We're on Broadway as well. Uh, We're Sorgatron on Broadway. They're slice on Broadway. Uh, But anyways, uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. uh, Supporting our guests that come in here during their dinner hour. And uh, making sure everybody gets fed and everybody's energized to talk technology with us here on the Awesome Cast. Check them up here in Beachview, Main Street down in uh, Carnegie, PA. uh, PNC Park on the Pittsburgh 
Pirates, as well as our new location in East Liberty out there. Uh, so go visit them wherever around town. And thank you so much to those guys for supporting the show and supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with their pizzas. All right. Uh, we got some some uh, user submitted stories here. Again, from that uh, awesome cast Facebook group that I've discussed before. Uh, so ooh, this looks fun. But uh, I believe Brandon uh, Brandon shared a couple of things in there for us. And one of them I thought was, this was interesting. This is a Lego 3D uh, Etsy shop where uh, apparently if you send him like your family portrait, he'll make a uh, a Lego family <laughs> 3D printed uh, uh, based on your photos. So if you ever wanted to be a Lego character. So, so think like the We Clone You guys that we talked to. Uh, a couple months back on Awesome Chat, but Legoized. That's very cool. Which I don't know if that makes it creepier or less creepier because, you know, <laughs> depending on your look at it. Uh, uh, Brian, would you like to be a Lego person? Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. <laughs> it's a little more. I think it, it, it's kind of cool. You're like, well, they put you know, the hair and the beard and everything. That would actually be guy, fun. Right? We, we were talking about uh, mugs. But I, mm. I think we were talking about that before we came on air and different podcasting mugs and how everyone should have one. I feel like that would be like super cool. Like imagine like all of your clients and you had Lego versions of them right along the window sh- seal here as people were walking by. Mm-hmm. I feel like that would be like super cool. I, I'm all awesome. about it. That'd yeah. be awesome. You imagine just having like a Sawtooth Willie version. Yeah, and, that's that's what I mean. You know, or something like that. That'd be that'd be great. The wrestlers should do this, to be quite honest. Yeah, I uh, agree. That's awesome. You can check it out. Um, it is the Mr. Lego Art 3D on Etsy if you want to go check that out. Uh, it's a pretty cool shop going on over there. It, it's, it's not inexpensive either. I mean, uh, there's one guy with a model airplane for $45 and then like a family portrait for like 135 So, But I mean, this is custom. That's actually know. cheaper than it's, I was expecting it to be. That's not bad. That's, yeah, compa- that, was... that's comparative to what the 3D uh, cloning, the three the we clone 3D guys are. Yeah. So um, yeah, and there, theirs is like a resin, again, 3D printed statue kind wow. of thing. So we clone you 3D. So. How did, did, does it say how he makes them? Is he like hand painting and hand molding, or doesn't really say in this part of it? Hopefully, it's chip proof. He just says custom family portraits, printable digital image. Hmm. So, uh, but he also is putting them apparently on t-shirts and stuff too. So, there you go. All right. Uh, and uh, other than that, we also have um, uh, he, he, he mentioned PlayStation trophies. Uh, this is from uh, Game Addict. Uh, PlayStation trophies can now be uh, applied to purchasing games. Is I'm not a thing? PlayStation gamer. No, so neither am I. That? Neither am I. So trophies are like like your gamer points. Oh, oh. It, it, it's how they do it over there. So, so imagine if those could qualify over. Like a hundred silver trophies would be a hundred points. And I don't know what their point system is like over there either. Um, so I can't believe they're still on. So a thousand points would equal ten dollars of credit. That's awesome. So, that wouldn't be bad. I, now here's the question: Does it like does it somehow somehow dog ear those? points so they're just not converted to cash in the future or do they actually are you well, i think the, i don't man? think you can it, it, you know because when when xbox would do this it just goes to your account and you could never cash it out for the most part right but i don't like i feel like people like that's bragging rights like i have my gamer score is x and if people if you had to cash that in you don't want to lose the score right so is there a way to keep the score but show that you've oh, no, cashed no, no, no. in a portion I, I, I of think that. You know what I mean? Ad- I think it's the additional like like points or what get added on. Okay. That point, I would imagine. So, and and this was a I thought an f- uh, interesting thing I saw come up. Uh, Razer, who we know for like keyboards and and controllers and like high end gaming things, released an Android phone. Brian, maybe this is what you should consider for your next phone uh, to replace that thing. And and whenever you go to the next. Uh, uh, yeah, platform or whatever, right? Uh, so no, it's it's a it's a high end phone. It's got some pretty sweet uh, uh, audio to it. You know, it has, has dual dual speakers on each side. It's got a, a pretty high end graphics processor, uh, and it was it looks. I mean, it, it it doesn't look impressive, I guess, because it just looks like a square phone. Again, every phone looks the same. Yeah, but but generally, it's uh, there was a I, I watched this entire. Um, review over at Engadget and it, it does look like 
you know, they're showing off Final Fantasy. Um, I forget which one, like this kind of phone, uh, Final Fantasy Mobile uh, Pocket Edition, I guess it is. And uh, it looks pretty nice and, uh, it, you know, pretty nice um, screen and everything like that. Again, super high end. Uh, you know, do you think this is, I, I don't know the gaming culture on Android phones. Um, I imagine it's somewhat comparable to what we have on, on iOS and everything like that. And I wonder if that's worthwhile to get this nice big, you know, uh, uh, phone for gaming. I would bet there's a bigger gaming culture over there only because of the open app stores or the yeah. ability to easily sideload apps. I mean, I'll be honest with you on my Android device. Um, I mean, I play Game Boy, I play Super Nintendo. So having access to all those emulators and sideloaded app stores, I could see there being a huge market for this type of device. Not that you're probably going to get switch quality out of it, but you're probably going to get up there to, to really push that gaming capability forward. To me, it'd be interesting. And I, who was it? It was it NVIDIA that had the shield. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of went into a controller dock. Mm -hmm. Like I'm surprised. And I, I haven't seen this. So I don't know if they have a controller dock for it yet. It wouldn't surprise me if it was either around the corner or they're recommending third party ones. And, and this is also, this is vanilla uh, Android nougat nice. they're running. Uh, it does have the uh, Nova launcher, which I'm not familiar with that, but mm -hmm. I imagine it's probably a little more, you know, better. That's just the app launcher basically. Uh, but other than that, like it's a nice clean thing. So there's not, you know, this like, it's like, it's like, I remember when Alienware first came out, just like, listen, we're not going to have crap on your computer. Right. Like this is that, like we're not yeah. going to have crap loaded on your phone so you can play your games on at top quality. Well, that is one thing I like about this phone is I don't have, because I got it unlocked, I don't have any of the carrier crap on right, it. Right, so, right, right. Which it Moto, Moto was always pretty good about that because yeah. was, especially that era was when they were owned by Google, I think. Yeah. So, and they're actually, I believe they're moving back to, uh, to like, I mean, this isn't true stocked Android. It's pretty no. close. Yeah. But I heard that they are moving back in, in that direction. Mm -hmm. Um, now, about Apple, one thing, I, I always feel like th their culture in Apple has never been one that lends itself to gaming. I know, like, for a long time, you couldn't play most games on an Apple computer, for example. So I, I feel like, and, and you're right with uh, locking them out of so many different apps. That's one thing that always kind of aggravated me about, about Apple on the phone. I've, I've been happy with, obviously, the, the legal the normal games, the, the, the publishers, and I'm not a big candy crush person, but mm. like, uh, I play a couple of star Wars games all the time. Yeah. Pokemon, anything like, significant seems to be cross platform. Yeah, these days. They're hitting, they're hitting all yeah. of them. Mm. I mean, I'm getting all the Sega games, the Sega forever games you download and you pay $2 to get rid of the ads if you want to and get save games and everything like that. My only thing is I wish there was more coming to the Apple TV because they really pushed the Apple TV as this gaming platform. And oh, they actually did because I never knew that they did that. It was always in my mind that they should do that. I, I always thought they're, cr they're crazy for not with, getting into streaming With the last gaming. update, not this, this 4K one this year, but like, what was that, two years ago? They pushed for it. You can get a controller for it and everything. But still, it's not like things that make sense aren't coming over. Like, yeah. why aren't all the Sega games coming over? Like, when some of the Sega, some you know, it's nice because you buy like Sonic the Hedgehog, and on my phone, and it works over there. But only Sonic One, Two, and Sega C or Sonic CD, not Sonic Four, Episode One and Two, not these other Sega games Sonic that they're putting Knuckles, out. Like, yeah. why aren't they being converted over for this? And I have a controller for it, but then I have like two games that it works for. Um, so it, it it's. When they have something, it's really nice, but it still feels like I'm missing a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and, and as far as like, you know, PC, you know, I mean, a lot of games are Mac, Mac compatible if you look on Steam. Uh, you know, not everything, of course, but... Do you, you think know. the devs don't want to go in that direction? Because it's like they're giving you a free copy of the game? I don't know. Or, you know, it's got to be another hassle to develop that for the different platforms some games don't make sense some games make sense for a screen and you you change it to the remote mm -hmm. it doesn't work right um but when you have something like a sonic the hedgehog that has controller support and it makes sense and it's on tv why don't you put that in you have controller support even on the sega forever apps on the phone so what's stopping them from bringing it over? It could be a dev thing. It could be that we mm -hmm. don't want to do that. We don't want to compete with our TV properties because they're also trying to sell the same game maybe over on an Xbox or something, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, to me, it's a little frustrating 
on that side. A lot of fun stuff to play. I love playing Mega Man. Um, what was it? Mega Man Two Fifty Six and and uh, 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 Aldo's Adventure on my big TV. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. It's a great experience. To, and then I can pick up pretty much where I left off on my phone on the go. That's awesome. I just wish there was more of it. Or even, and I play through them on my phone. I, I, I almost want to go back and play through things like Laura Croft Go on the, there. The one thing that I think that hurt them from the beginning was they came out with this crazy, silly role. Yes. That when they were, that, that, that version of the TV, I'm trying to remember what it was. Technically it was Apple TV everything, three, every four, whatever. Everything had to work with the remote that came with right, it. Right, right. You couldn't have anything that was controller only. Although I think that might have changed. That changed. That, that changed. changed. That, that changed. But like, then, but then you're not gonna you're not gonna make your Grand Theft Auto three, which makes sense, compatible with the TV. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, they released well, at least three different Grand Theft Auto games, like PlayStation two Grand Theft Auto games, and you're like. Well, that, that, of course you put that on an Apple TV with a controller, right? Nope, mm-hmm. never done it. Hmm. So I think it's a shame. I think it's just another missed opportunity, and maybe they didn't put the full force behind. Because they could seriously, like, they're at a point I'm just like, wow, I don't really need an Xbox because this is actually pretty awesome on my TV with some of these racing games. Mm-hmm. Asphalt looks great. As good as any, you know, game I would ever want to play on my 360. Look better than my 360. It's an Apple TV that I spent, like... A fraction of the price for you know. Wow. So well, that has that. I mean, they had multiplayer support where you could have oh, multiple yeah. people sharing a screen. I mean, right. I don't think there's any online play, but um, no, it was a really nice concept. But it just uh, they just awesome. couldn't get the devs behind it. Chilla, tell me about AR navigation. AR navigation. Um, so I I've, I've been waiting for apps like this to come up. There's a um, let me find the formal name of it. Blippar, B L I P P A R, just launched its first AR City app for iOS. Obviously, it's it's leveraging AR Kit. Um, so there's not an Android counterpart to this, unfortunately. Hopefully, they'll have something because obviously, right after AR Kit was announced, Google came out with kind of their their thing. What this does is, it, in addition to using GPS, it uses the camera to figure out which building's which, and then to to more accurately geolocate you on a map. Jeez. Um, where I like this is if you've ever, and I'm trying to think of cities like Philadelphia, where there's a lot of narrow side streets to, to get around the city while you're walking. That's to me where this makes sense, where you, is it this street or is it this alley and things aren't extremely well marked mm-hmm. um i've been to comic-con a couple of times there and that's that's where i would definitely want to use this um so it, it just allows you better accuracy than gps alone um so i'm super excited about this now the one bad thing about this app for now it, it will work with any city that apple maps covers mm. but the visual positioning is only available in central london mountain view and san francisco wow so it's not going to work everywhere. The, the other thing that I thought was pretty cool is as you're traveling around, you have your map in the lower right corner from what I've seen. Um, and it highlights on the street or on the sidewalk where you want to go. Um, and then it will also highlight certain things or points of interest as you're walking down the street. Um, if there's an ice cream shop or there's whatever, I, I just thought it was really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Did you hear about that debate between Tim Cook and uh, Zuckerberg? About no. so like they Zuckerberg thinks that virtual reality is the the next big thing. Tim Cook thinks it's going to be the augmented reality. Who do you think is is right in that? I, I feel like I they would, both... so. And Microsoft tends to go with that mixed reality. I'm not going to walk around cities, and I'm not even going to sit at my desk with goggles on. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that, I mean, you look at a lot of that equipment, and it's not been till recently where they're even starting to tout the concept of the wireless goggles and and that kind of thing. I'll be honest with you. I would rather have, even from a VR perspective, just from the portability factor, I would rather have the Google daydream type thing or the uh, Samsung uh, gear VR stuff because it is more portable it's easier to get into the hands of people from a cost perspective. I don't have to worry about having a PlayStation to get their VR. Yeah. I just think it's going to be 
for right now, I'm on the AR side because it's more accessible to the general public without having to jump through a bunch of hoops. We were talking at work about doing um, some giving that VR type experience and it's, well, what are you going to do? You're, are you going to give everyone goggles or how are you going to mm-hmm. convey this to the average consumer? And maybe something like a, uh, the Google cardboard solution, which we always, we've always touted as a, Hey, that's something you can do something mm-hmm. cheaper, but still it takes a little bit of a curve to it. Right. Right. Well, I feel like augmented reality could be so useful for like your average day life Whereas I feel like VR is going to be more useful for like specialized things. Like mm-hmm. you need to learn how to do, uh, you know, some sort of like say you're like a nuclear physicist and you need to test something and you don't want to have an actual meltdown. But if you go through VR, you could have a meltdown in VR and, and not, you know, destroy a city. Whereas like okay. augmented reality, you know, I need to know, you know, how to get to a pizza place and I could see it on, you know, the the phone or. or and I was talking reviews. to someone that they do they do the training program for new like what to do for the people that work at the nuclear reactor sites Mm -hmm. what do you do if there's a meltdown well they can't send them through that training yeah so and they were talking about using like the the galaxy vr and stuff like that to be able to do that you could put them in the reactor you could put them without exposing them to these dangers but here's what actually you need to be able to do so that's yes, cool. in, a, in a specialized environment. The other thing is, I mean, even from the directions perspective, like how many airports do we go to that we're, we're not familiar with and it's our first time in an airport? Just being able to navigate that. I want to, where's the Chick-fil-A? That's a good point. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Especially because most airports aren't just one long concourse. There's all these breakoffs, and the, there's only certain restaurants in certain sections. I, the wayfinding aspect of of AR, I think, is is much more interesting to me than the the short gameplay. Well, you know, it, you know, in a lot of those situations where you're trying to use AR and it's in a a a specialized place. You, now you know that the HoloLens has now been certified as protective eyewear, you guys. Ooh. We're all set. It, 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 it is kind of funny, but it is true. Um, but this is something like I, I – I, and, and this really kind of viewed one way that HoloLens can be, you know, not just us playing games in Minecraft with, but certainly something that can be used much like we're seeing with the Google Glass. We're hearing how that's being used in industry and things like that. And there's actually a pretty good kind of product video – demonstration video there they're you know office 365 and all these guys talking about in manufacturing and you know how people can guide you um these wish we'd they'd actually get back to where we showed some of this stuff but uh you know things like you know somebody can can change you know what's in front of you and and, and guide you to like you know how to fix something uh and things like that like kind of more yeah i would say practical you know uh industry uses right i mean this was the whole theory behind the Google Glass. Yeah, it was kind of the initial promise of Google Glass, mm-hmm. wasn't it? When we saw those videos, it, which the problem was Google Glass never lived up to those. This could be what we do with this idea. Or you were going to have all those lessons, and they were going to you were going to be able to. What was the thing before Hangout, where it was like a training, like you could take, you could sell class. Yeah, well, that, that was something that was like alongside. And... That yeah, that was like something alongside. Use Google Hangout technology. You go on and you could be a expert. Like I could teach somebody how to podcast or something. And it was over Google Hangouts, but it was through their system that you sold your services to teach. Or or like your car breaks down and you need to to pop the hood and do something. Mm -hmm. You could go onto a Hangout and someone, they're going to see what you're seeing. So they're going to be like, okay, check this, check this, check this. You know what I mean? That's incredible. Yeah. Walk someone through changing their tire. Talk about like the next generation of like YouTube, how to do it videos. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yep. Excuse me. Nothing. Um, But yeah, this is the future. (laughs) (laughs) So. All right. Hey, Brian, thanks for joining us. Yeah. And uh, tell us again, where can people go check out what's going on with River's Edge and Metal Edge? It is, okay, yep. Uh, MetalEdgePGH.com. This Sunday, 8.30 p.m., we will publish the stream, all local, hard, rock, and metal. And then, of course, for a great variety of local, original music, you've got RiversEdgePGH.com, the uh, the old tried and true and, and original station. So, yep, and, very uh, excited. 
And if you join us here on the live stream, we're usually playing some River's Edge here before the show. And we might have to mix it up a little bit here yeah. uh, as we go on when the Metal Edge comes out. And thank you, of course, one of our streaming partners here uh, for the awesome cast and our, our and our friends on the Sorgatron Media Network, Fishing Without Bait, of course. Really cool crew over there that we get to work with. So uh, thank you again for joining us. Thanks for having me. And of course, John Chill is at chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitter is John Chill on the Facebook. Come send me your uh, 200 and what is it, 80 character, 40 yeah. character tweets. Yeah, <laughs> you got to get all Gabby on the internet now on the Twitters. So awesome. Go check it out. And of course, everything at sorgatronmedia.com. All the great podcasts. And subscribe to this show on awesomecast.com. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our, our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.